Now, there were some nuggets that got lost last week in the new Gallup poll that are key to the 2024 campaign. In the presidential character and abilities categories, Biden is losing ground big time. Check this out. He's down 13 points on the question of whether he can manage the government effectively. Can't find his way off the stage. Of course, he can't manage the government. He's down nine on likability. Wow. And he's down, down nine on whether he displays good judgment in a crisis. That's shocking. And he lost eight points on the is he a strong and decisive leader question. Now, on these same questions, Trump is up a point or flat from 2020. And this poll isn't the only warning sign for Biden. The Trump trials have not moved the needle for Biden at all. The border story keeps getting worse, and inflation remains, as Jamie Dimon said yesterday, sticky. That means it's bad. Voters just are not happy. Plus, even in blue states like Nevada, Democrat incumbents may be in trouble. And while the official reaction from the Democrats is kind of cool as a cucumber, oh, the stories say, oh, we're confident and focused, there seems to be some contingency planning underway. The party that prides itself for being pro-women, and of course, they're all champions of diversity, is giving the first Latina on the Supreme Court, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the bum's rush. As usual, ideas are advanced by liberal senators and then by press surrogates. Republicans are very good at stacking courts. Democrats aren't very good at seeing the power of the Supreme Court. And that's why I worry. I worry that why would you want to repeat history? Why take the risk? You have a Democratic president and a Democratic Senate, and you have a justice who's about to turn 70. It shouldn't be a personal choice. What are people doing in their 80s on the Supreme Court? OK, perhaps the obvious point. I love a Brit le lecturing us on our court. Uh, the obvious point eludes him. She's 12 years younger than Biden, dude, and the Constitution gives them life tenure. Again, read it. Plus, it was their side that has literally floated the idea of court packing. Is that different from stacking? Meaning an attempt to dilute the power of any Republican appointees by expanding the number of justices or judges. Pass the Judiciary Act to expand the Supreme Court and bring balance and fairness back to the Supreme Court. We have a moral duty to act. There is no more time to waste. Supreme Court justices may serve lifetime appointments, but we cannot wait a lifetime to write injustices. Senator Snake Eyes from my home state of Connecticut tried the opaque approach to influencing the justice. We should learn a lesson. You know, it, and it's not like there's any mystery here about what the lesson should be. Uh, the, the old saying, you know, graveyards are full of indispensable people, ourselves in this body included. Okay, Richard, or is it Dick? Why don't you go first? And this isn't the first time that the left pressured a senior justice to step aside. The New York Times wrote about Justice Stephen Breyer's retirement two years ago, saying Justice Breyer retired a little reluctantly, under pressure from liberals who wanted to make sure that President Biden could appoint his successor and that the conservative supermajority on the court, currently at six to three, would not get any more lopsided. Again, what this tells us is that even their firsts and their vaunted, brilliant justices are fair game if there is any hint that their presence on the scene is becoming inconvenient. This is how ruthless the left is. And it's so consumed, of course, by holding on to power by any means necessary. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.